In our shop we have two surface grinders. On the left is the Kent automatic surface grinder. On the right is the Chevalier manual surface grinder and that's what we're going to start with first in this episode. Uh, if you look at the right hand side down on the base you will find the controls that's the only ones there. You have a switch to turn it uh, you have a green button to turn the spindle on and a red button to turn the power off. Uh, in the back we have a vacuum. On the right hand side is the one you want to use. The uh, green to turn the vacuum on and that will suck the dust up for when you're grinding. Um, first thing you want to do is pull the uh, give a pull on the automatic oiler is right below the, uh, the head wheel. Um, Make sure that the uh, the level is about halfway full. And the first thing you do is you want to once you got your spindle on, you want to dress that wheel. So you want to move this to about center, just slightly left of center. If you were looking at a face of a clock, the minute hand would be at about 32, 33. So unfortunately, there is a uh, knob there. It's supposed to uh, tighten it and hold it in place. It isn't working right now so what I've done is just use the spring stops, the bumper stops at the end. That usually holds it tight enough. You're taking that much off at a time anyway. You're taking about a thousandth to two thousandths at the most when you're dressing. Um, and most of this is done kind of by sound. You can hear it dressing on there. It's got a nice clean sound. When you feel, when you hear that it's got a, uh, uh, a nice sound uh, the right uh, tone and is cleaning it up. Um, you can tell it's getting all the way across. Uh, and you want to, you know, the faster you go, the rougher it's going to be. The so go ahead, just a nice across. Um, and here is a good view. You can see what I was talking about. As you can tell by this view, it's clearly just slightly left of center. Um, the diamond. If it was on the right and for some reason it was to kick in, it would leave a big gouge in the wheel or could actually blow up the wheel, which uh, I've seen that happen and it scatters things everywhere. So once you've got it uh, dialed in, um, move it across, nice easy pace like you're seeing here. Once it's done, just move it up out of the way. And uh, it is a magnetic base, so um, go ahead and pull it off of that uh, magnetic chuck and uh, just stick it on the side of the machine. That's where it stays so the next person can find it. A little demonstration of, uh, just like the lathe, the uh, big wheel controls the x-axis that travel along the ways. The smaller wheel on the right is uh, controls the y-axis, uh, your cross slide. So you can see I'm just moving back and forth. There's the bump stop. It's a little spring loaded. You know, find a nice comfortable uh, rhythm. You can move it to one side, feed in, move it to one other side, feed in. Um, when Once you've got everything dressed and you're ready to, uh, this is a permanent magnetic chuck, so which means that it doesn't need any power. Um, you've wiped off the top of the, any grit from dressing off the top and you'll set your part on there and then move that handle to the right and that grips it pretty good not as strong as a magnetic chuck but strong enough and what I'm going to show you here is a quick way to find uh, you're really close to the part just uh, take an ordinary piece of scratch paper There's a, here is this note pa paper from a small notepad that's about three three and a half thousandths thick you want to move it down slowly. Now I'm gripping onto this just tight enough so that it doesn't the wind from the movement doesn't take it out of my hands. But once it the wheel actually touches it, it will grip that and pull it right out of my hand. You can see that here in just a second. And boom. Once that is, you stop moving down. So we are at two to three thousandths away from the part. Now I'm going to go ahead and. Uh, move the uh, wheel down about two thousandths that should actually touch or just be slightly we'll come in here and move it stops 
off to one side and then the other. Um, I don't think I, uh, it doesn't look like I moved that right hand bump stop far enough. So you can see when you, um, we'll go ahead and move that bump stop. There is a nice, now we can get in a good rhythm moving across. And uh, once you get comfortable with this, you can move it across and then, you know, along the, the ways and move it forward, move it forward, move it forward, move it forward on your right hand side. So you get into a nice rhythm with this and uh, you can get a really nice surface. Otherwise, this is uh, doing it is can be tedious. Watching it can be even more tedious. Now, here on the wheel, you know, see each one of those marks is one ten thousandth of an inch, totally one thousandth down, and that's about the max that you want to move uh, when you're grinding. That's why when you're roughing machining, you want to with uh, a lot of people that leave way too much. Or on the other side, they don't take into consideration the warp. So there, once again, I moved one thousand, one ten thousandth, and then we'll move back across. Now for this one, once again, I've sped this up. And what I'm going to do when I get to the end here, rather than feed down again, I'm going to move back across without feeding down. This is called a ghost pass, or an empty pass, or a spring pass. There's called different things. Uh, I've heard it called a bunch of different things over the, over the few the years that I've been in the trade. But now that it's done, made it all the way across, we'll, we'll back that thing out and uh, release the magnet and pull that off. And what you can see, pull that off. And what you can see, there, move the handle to the left, there is a nice ground part. And we're done.